Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What's up, Thought Warriors? It is I, <laughs> Van Lathan. You don't like that voice? You know what? It's the face with the voice. Oh, it's Daddy. me, Rachel Lindsay. It's the face that takes I, it. Just, I've never, can we, can we gift that? Can we gift that face oh. to him? Oh, Daddy. Have I ever told you how, <laughs> have I ever, have I ever told you how I would use the voice? I think so. I would use it during sports. Like okay, somebody, no, you somebody, I, I would, I would. Somebody would be at the free throw line. I'd be down no. there on the block, and I'd be like, "Make this free throw, Daddy, Daddy, stroke this free throw," and everybody would be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, "I mean, like, concentrate. Oh, make it, do it, do it." And it's like it's just funny. <laughs> or like when we were playing Marvel versus Capcom I Two, never we, we had a tournament and somebody that. gets in a long combo that I don't like. Maybe they, I mean, you know, we other guys would come over to. So we were in Baton Rouge, so the guys from New Orleans would come up and play against us, and the guys from Houston would come up and play against us. Mm -hmm. And they were if they were getting off a like a uh, like a long combo that was like fucking up one of our boys, like Dakota or Charles or Kevin or somebody like that, I would be like, oh. Oh, work them, daddy. Work them. <laughs> like everybody would laugh and they would break their concentration. <laughs> oh, fa oh, father. Father. <laughs> uh, Rachel. Uh, uh, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. You know, Brian has arrived. He is here now. He's officially Ooh. a Los Angeles resident. Mm -hmm. So that was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just good to have him here. We went on long walks, pulled a page out of your book, you know, getting to know mm -hmm. the new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Easter kicked it. I cooked. You know, that those those days are far and few between. But, yeah, like it was it was nice to have him here. It was all good until the middle of the night. Yeah, and then earthquake. things took a turn for the worse. Earthquake shook me. Shook, uh, he shook me all night long. <laughs> earthquake. We had an earthquake. We had a we had a substantial earthquake this morning around four o'clock in the morning. It was four forty five when I looked at my clock. Mm. But see, here is the thing: that was Brian's first earthquake ever. For me, I've been in an earthquake, so Brian thought somebody was running down the hall. Cause he oh. and so he woke up and he shot up. So I couldn't go to sleep after that because then he started asking me all these questions. Should we go outside? Well, how do you prepare? And I was like, I don't know. You're supposed to have like an earthquake Brian. kit or something like that. I don't on, know Brian. those. I don't know those kind of things. Come on, Brian. Come on, man. It's not Are even you supposed to run outside? It, but like, well, you got to understand. He knows hurricanes. This is first one, right? We, we would one. freak out over a hurricane. I wouldn't freak out over over a tornado. Like that's 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 how where we come from. Shit. The I tornado, know, the tornado I would know how is to the, duck and cover. I would know how to duck and cover. I'm scared of tornado. The hurricanes, I'm, look, look, I'm not going to say the hurricanes aren't a big deal because obviously I lived through one of the yeah. single most devastating weather events that's ever hit the United States. But I will say this, uh, the real failure in that hurricane even then was a societal failure because there should have been something put in place to make sure that people could stay safe because you right. know that the hurricane is coming, Right. Right. The tornado is like, hey, just to let you guys know there's a tornado watch. And then all of a sudden, no more house. So the tornado is like super okay, scary dramatic. to me. It's scary. It's scary. It is scary. But the thing is with tornadoes is when you grow up in Tornado Alley, you hit, you see tornado watch a lot on your television screens and nothing right. happens. So you become desensitized to it. I'm not saying that they're not scary. I'm not saying they're not devastating. It's just you see it a lot. Earthquake? The ground is moving. That's that's unheard of. So True. you know, I, we're gonna have to study up on a, what to do with the earthquake. Because I mean, eventually there'll be an earthquake that'll devastate Southern California to a. Oh, that's something to, to look point. forward to. Just the way you said it. Well, eventually fact, there'll be an it's earthquake. A, it's a I know, fact. I know, but it's, haven't they been saying that for a while? They've been saying it for a while. That doesn't make it any less true. They've also been saying for a while that eventually the sun will supernova and consume the earth. It's just not in a while that's going to happen pretty soon, but eventually that's going to happen. Eventually the sun will supernova, consume the If that's the how you Earth. think, I understand your anxiety. Do you not even know me? Well, of course that's how I think. <laughs> like, like, I'm, no I was wonder you're always anxious. I, I was walking this morning and a truck was coming and the truck passed by and I was like, what if the truck would have jumped the curb? 
what I have, what I, what I I have had time to get out of the way. Like, I can't live like that. <laughs> I can't live like that. Oh my gosh, poor Van. So you didn't go back to sleep after the earthquake because I know I did. Man, hell no. I tried. I put on the Calm app, listen to the white lady. They need. They. I wonder if they could. Uh, if there's some like, I, you know what I need? I need what? like. There needs to be an auntie app. Oh, you should create this. Like an auntie app, like because when you, I love. Don't get me wrong. I love the Headspace guy. I, I think. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the Headspace guy is one of my closest friends. I, ever, how often do you listen to it when you go to sleep? Or every walks? day. Okay. Every day I listen to the Headspace guy. I never hey, listen to it. Close your eyes. Sit upright. It's time for you to take some time out of your day for yourself. Just make sure that you're in the space that you want to be. You can feel yourself sinking into your seat. And then I, before you know it, it's like, this is great. And so I, like... The, don't the, let the, me do that voice again. The, that, that's how he sounds. And, well, but, but, you sound creepy. But that's how he sounds. But like, it would be dope if they had like an auntie one. Like, come over here, baby. Come over here. You so wound up, baby. You just like your uncle. Come over here and sit down. <laughs> Bless your heart. Rock back and forth. Just rock back and forth and let auntie rub your back. Do you, if you haven't felt the warmth mm-hmm. and of a 60-year-old black woman who loves you, God damn. Like of a of a just of a of a woman that's seen so much and like has an answer and even knows how to distract you from yourself for a second. Yeah. Might rock you back and forth and hum or like it's like or uh, my mom was singing that song, Redeem. Uh, come on. Judas was eating his last past over. Judas was a, uh, it's like it's like it's like my mom is singing that song and I'm like, oh my God, I feel okay. It's gonna be okay. Headspace don't have that. Well, maybe it's coming. Maybe on the update. So Brian is there. Did you and you guys you guys had a fun time? You guys been been, been enjoying each other's company? It's great it's, time. Yeah. Okay, now the real work begins. Then, you know. <laughs> We've been together, okay? It's not like we just, we just, we just spent all the quarantine together. The real work begins. Okay. Um, How was your weekend? What did you do? You celebrate Easter? I chilled. I chilled. chilled. Yeah. I thought I was going to have some sweets yesterday for Easter, but then Kalika reminded me, you're just going to hate yourself after you eat the sweets, so why Mm -hmm. are you doing it? It's a good woman. So the reality is that I just chilled, didn't eat too much, you know, still trying to, Shave off the pizzounds, you know. I'm literally two pounds away from my haircut. I was gonna say, take your hat off. So that we we know how you're doing by your hairline. It's peeking out a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're struggling. Wu Tang. <laughs> <We're struggling. laughs> That's so crazy that my hairline looks like that. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't it's so crazy because like I got that little deal, Wu Tang. It's Wu-Tang like a cloud hairline. in the front. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, look, I'm glad you're doing well. Let's go ahead and take a break. Get into the damn show. All right. Paul Pierce. (laughs) (laughs) Now, in case you guys don't know, this is interesting now. I want to, I really want to talk about this. So in case you guys don't know, I do. I want to lead the show with this. Well, that's what I think I'm more shocked by. I'm very curious as to what you're going to say that you want to lead the show with Paul Pierce. I want to lead the show with Paul Pierce because it's mm-hmm. a lot of it's a sports heavy show today. A lot of sports topics. We're not gonna spend too much time on this. Paul Pierce, uh, in case you guys don't know, he was a uh, uh, was a basketball player, ex basketball player, uh, champion for the Celtics. One time, he scammed the whole sports world. He acted like he was hurt. Oh and he yeah! Got don't off don't the do this! Court. Don't do this! That's what happened, Jackson. Jackson. Don't do this. By the way, I was I had, I was I had gone to the Staples Center. Me and Kalika. We had gone to the Staples Center to watch this game. And we had gone to the Staples Center to watch this game because there was, there was this thing where they, like, you could watch the game on the big Jumbotron because they, they, they were playing in Boston. This was, like, the 2008 Finals, 9 Finals or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it looked like he got hurt. And i never forget this. When it looked like he got hurt, they were wheeling him off the court. There were people there that were clapping. And I looked at Kalika. I said, we're going to lose. I was like, we're gonna lose. I said, like, God don't, God don't, God don't reward that type. I said, we're gonna lose. We're gonna, the Lakers will lose this game. 
And I, and I was actually telling people, hey, man, that dude from right here in Inglewood, stop clapping for this man to be hurt. That dude wasn't hurt at all. He got off, he came off the wheelchair. It was like fucking Tiny Tim. He tortured the Lakers for the rest of that game and that whole series, man. Didn't he have to go to the bathroom or something like that? Was no, he, he was hurt. He nah, wasn't hurt. He, he wasn't hurt. Had nothing to do with the bathroom. He, he wasn't hurt. The man came back on the floor and played like fucking Larry Bird, Jackson. He wasn't hurt. There was no hurt. He was, <laughs> it was a ruse to get his teammates fired up, whatever. So he's a, he's, a, he's a future Hall of Famer, one of the best Celtics ever. He was on his Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> drunk and lit with strippers. He also, by we should say right now, uh, works for ESPN, if I am right. correct. Um, he was drunk and lit with strippers, ass everywhere. And when I say strippers, I don't mean the ones you see on Instagram that go around the country. I mean strippers that are local. Yeah, they, they definitely are, are local. Yeah, but I, not to diss them. I'm talking about these are working ladies. Yeah. Okay? All right? So, so it's not like, hey, Malaya Michelle's in town. I got to go see her. Nah, this is Keisha. This is Jody. This is, you know what I mean? Shout out to Keisha and Jody. Not dissing them, but he was there. And everywhere. Everywhere. Ass. He's drinking. He is completely smacked. And it went viral. Everybody had an opinion. Kyle Kuzma said he was a sicko. <laughs> yeah. Like all, like all types of people were just getting on. He went viral for this, and a lot of people were saying that yeah. this, this, that this was in poor taste. That Paul Pierce was doing this. I think he's like forty three or forty four years old. That this was in poor taste. I'm having problems seeing what's wrong with this. Well, for one, he's married. Okay, what is that? So, what does that mean? So it seems disrespect. I listen. My husband can go to the strip club. That's fine. Okay, but like the fact that you're bringing them to your home and then you're like publicizing that you've got strippers all around you and then encouraging encouraging other women in the comments to come there saying they're haters and you should come here too and make this money. I just, it, <laughs> it just seemed very disrespectful to the what fact that it? he's married. What is it? It's like, I think that's the number one thing people had with it. It's the fact that it looked like he was disrespecting the fact that he's married. Now, can we play the common sense game real quick? Can Go we ahead. play the common sense game? So Paul Pierce was married. Okay, with, yes. And this is happening in his house. And he is putting this on Instagram. By playing this game, wouldn't you say that the chances are remote that Paul Pierce's wife did not know about the activity that was happening in his house? She didn't know. How do, you, how do we know she didn't no, know? I, well, we don't know. I, was, I would assume she didn't know. I, and I would assume, because I would assume... I was. I would just assume she didn't know. Maybe she well, did. But why Maybe would he? Did. Why would we assume? So you think that Paul Pierce is going to go have a stripper party at his crib, put all of this stuff on online for the entire world, and have his wife not know? Did you see Paul Pierce? Do you think Paul Pierce was in his right mind at that yeah, moment? Yeah, you, you, you don't get that <laughs> schmacked. You can't yeah, get yeah. that schmacked. He was lit. He said, "We've been to Turkey's." Not, we've been to Turkey. He said, we've been to Turkey's. The man was not okay. Listen, if he was, if he did that on, pur in, on purpose and was in his right mind, you got to be some kind of stupid to, will to go on IG Live and do this. Nobody asked for this. Nobody asked oh, for Paul we Pierce didn't, we didn't to open ask. the door and show us what goes on inside of your home. We didn't we ask, didn't Paul. We didn't ask, but we certainly are appreciative, Paul. You sick <laughs> bastard, you. Paul looked like you sick bastard, you. Do you think Paul Pierce is in trouble with, uh, with Disney? Disney well, he hasn't owns. apologized. He hasn't apologized or said anything, right? Like, he There's woke nothing up the next to day apologize and like, for. Well, it depends what the situation is. Maybe he had a personal apology to his wife later. But he woke mm -hmm. up the next day and was like, good morning. Yeah, great, because great to be honest with you, So let me ask you this. Like, let me I ask just you think this. It, if for, Paul, for a Disney, Disney affiliated network, Right, uh -huh. Disney. Disney owns ESPN. You right. have a woman who you're on the jump. It is a woman-led show with Rachel Nichols. It's just a bad look. It's just a bad look. I what can't... you do? What you do Easter weekend, Paul? Well, Google it. Yeah. So, <laughs> well. so it's a bad look. So, it's somehow I'm really being serious. It's somehow yeah. disrespectful for to women or to Rachel Nichols for Paul Pierce to. 
patronize those, strippers those, or hire. Did those hired. women ask to be filmed? Right, because one girl one was th- all up in the camera. She wasn't dancing. The no. one who was massaging, the one who was massaging his shoulders, she wasn't dancing. The one who was she from was Turkey, a dancer, but she wasn't dancing. The one who was from in- in- uh, ugh, Istanbul was not <laughs> dancing either. <laughs> Turkeys. The one who was from Istanbul was not dancing either. The girl who was on the floor working. Did, do we know that she consented to be filmed? Did she consent to be filmed? Did she, did she consent to show up and dance? So that's what I'm saying. Like, you, they were throwing tokens on her. Her ass was out. She didn't even know she was on camera. Well, I'm, I'm okay. Number one, if in fact he taped somebody that didn't know they were on camera, that's wrong. That's okay? what it looked like. I'm going to be, look I'm gonna, at- I'm gonna be honest with you. Having, 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 have, Frequently the establishments and been to one. All strippers are not made the same. All strippers are not made the same. Don't do that. Oh, excuse me. You couldn't be more right. They are like (laughs) snowflakes. Each one delicate and precious and special in their own way. You couldn't be more right. But I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. So right now we are. I'm asking this. Okay. I'm asking this. Okay. So I'll say this. If in fact he was taping people without them knowing, that's wrong. But let's let's say this. Let's say Paul Pierce is having fun turning up at his crib with a bunch of dancers. Um, he put it on Instagram. Is that a reason to fire Paul Pierce? Is that a reason for Paul Pierce? Did Paul Pierce did anything to get in trouble with his job? I don't know. if Does that fall under the moral conduct policy? I don't know. That's a Damn. Disney question. I can't answer that. But mm-hmm. it's definitely not representative of Disney. You know what I'm saying? So well, Okay. 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 All right. It's not like somebody else could have the same takes Paul Pierce has on the jump. You know what I mean? They could bring wow. in somebody else. You just, boy, Rach, Rach, you are you a are hard one. You know what I mean? You just, you think get somebody else for Paul Pierce. Okay. I have breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah. From Ryan Glass Beagle. So I assume this is true, but I guess it hasn't been confirmed by ESPN yet. Source. ESPN parted ways with Paul Pierce effective immediately. <laughs> <laughs> immediately. Oh my God. You knew this was going to happen. Oh, this ain't Disney. ESPN. They're that's not weak. They are not. Listen, they got That's weak. They got ESPN. so many people that. Paul oh, Pierce was probably at the end of his contract. They were probably looking for a reason to get rid of him. Rachel Nichols probably was like, I am not affiliating myself with Can this I be shit. real, though? That really is weak. I, you know what? It, that also Suspension. makes it look like... It, 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 it's very weak. Number one, it makes it seem like patronizing sex workers or having a, a, a lot of fun with sex workers is wrong or bad that's not or what untoward. It, I'm that's telling you, it. man, it's part of this shame cycle that America nobody's has involving that he can't, sex. Nobody's saying he can't do those things. The thing is... But he just is, can't talk about them or show them. No, the thing is, is he put it on. He was he was clearly not in his right mind. Did he disrespect he, any of those women? Yes, because I don't think that woman on the ground consented to being filmed. Uh, we you don't, don't know, know that. You don't know. But, I'm, but maybe they do. Maybe they do know that. We don't know. I'm sure they had a conversation with him. We have no idea. I'm just saying... If they want it to be filmed, fine. But we don't know that for that young lady. Because she was Look, working hard. She was working. She was well, She was definitely working. Yeah, she, she was, was really she working was, She was definitely working. She was down that flap jacket. And look, <laughs> let me tell you something. Man, free Paul Pierce, man. Free Paul Pierce. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Free Paul Pierce. Let me Pierce. ask you this. Free if Stephen a, If Stephen A. Smith had posted the same video, do you think he would have been fired? Hell no. They would have made a show. I don't think, so either. They, I don't think have, so either. No, would he have been fired? Hell no, they wouldn't have fired Stephen A. Smith. They'd have made a actually, they would have made a spinoff show for him. Yeah. Stephen they A's have fired world him. live so from Magic your City. Live from Magic City is Stephen A's world. Stephen so A got every job answer. on ESPN. It's not about shaming. It's Paul Pierce. That's the but, just, they could I, they could get rid of him. Look, that's really, what they did. Really, to be honest with you, ESPN, ESPN Disney is behind the times here. Strip club, strip club culture is a part of American culture right now. It's a part of American culture, for the for better or for worse. It's probably I, I'm telling you right now. Do you know how many of the brass at ESPN right now, the guys who just made that decision, the of people course. who just made that decision? Do you know how much of these guys 
hypocrites probably have of multiple course. OnlyFans accounts, probably patronage dancers, probably do all of this stuff. It's and time. they'd say they keep it in private. That's what they would say. We keep it's it in private. I'm not saying to he should have been suspended. Shame these things. I'm actually so, surprised they fired him. That he should have been suspended. Maybe, but you know what? I will say this. Maybe it's the inebriation, but even that, he's not driving. He's not, it he's, was, he's okay. at his crib. He was encouraging other women, other women who were like upset by what they were saying. Girl, you know you a hater. Get on over here and make this money. I Man, mean, come on, Paul. He's, he's giving somebody an opportunity economically. Come on, it's Paul. tough times. All right. All right. Uh, let's take a break. Um, so, and, and more serious sports news. Uh, Major League Baseball has announced that it will be moving the 2021 All-Star Game from Atlanta, Georgia, over the Georgia voting law. Uh, this is the statement. Major League Baseball fundamentally supports voting rights for all Americans and opposes restrictions to the ballot box. In 2020, MLB became the first professional sports league to join the non-partisan partisan, partisan, civic alliance to help build a future in which Everyone participates in shaping the United States. We probably use our platform to encourage baseball fans and communities throughout our country to perform their civic duty and actively participate in the voting process. Fair access to voting continues to have our games on wavering support. This move was supported by President Obama, LeBron, a bunch of other people. It was roundly criticized over on the right. Brian Kemp was upset about it. Uh, the governor of Texas, good old Abbott, has now said he is not going to throw out the first page at a Major League Baseball game. Uh, the term cancel culture trend, trended on Twitter as conservatives were up in arms about the fact that they moved this baseball game because they didn't support the politics of the state of Georgia, or at least some people from the state of Georgia. Your thoughts on this? What do you think? Loved it. Loved every part of it. I find it interesting that MLB decided to do this, seeing how the NFL and the NBA were criticized when they made stances against, um, well, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was against voting, but still things that affected uh, the Black community, Black Lives Matter. But MLB, we really didn't see see that much from them the same way we did from NFL and NBA. So I I think it's fantastic that the MLB is taking a stance. I think that they are basically setting an example of how other corporations and organizations should consider pulling their business out of the state of Georgia or any other state that decides to enact these type of votes. I think it's important for them to do this too, because they're basically saying, look, votes matter. Voting matters. We should be encouraging people to vote, uh, not make it harder for them to vote. And I think it also emphasizes the fact that Republicans are running the running with this false narrative that there's this problem with the current voting system when there isn't. You can't make up and create real laws to fight an imaginary problem. And mm. I think that's the point that they're making. Mm. So I think, number one, I, obviously I support Major League Baseball, but I don't think they're doing it for the reasons that they said that they're doing it. Mm. Why this, do you? This is a business move. This okay. is an absolute business move. Major League Baseball is still going to have their All-Star game. Yes. They're just not going to have it in Atlanta. Okay? Mm -hmm. They'll, have they announced where they're going to do the All-Star game? Not that I've seen. They're still looking. The only thing they've said is it's not going to be Los Angeles because that's the 2022 All-Star game. They're not going to move that up. Okay. So, okay. Uh, some place will get a fantastic All-Star game. It's not a big deal from an economic standpoint for them to move the game. I'm sure there were some wills that were in motion and some promotion that was happening. But it's not going to be really any skin off their teeth uh, to skin off their teeth. That's actually not the way to use that. Skin of the teeth is when something's close. It's not going to be any skin off their necks. Is It's not going to be any skin off their necks to move the game. Okay? What mm -hmm. this does do, though, is it attracts black people and other people to the sport of baseball in much the same hmm. way that NASCAR supported Bubba Wallace, and it made people look at NASCAR in a different way. When all of this stuff happened back in the summer with George, with George Floyd, when all of these things happened with George Floyd, all the sports were, knee, were kneeling, right? Baseball, you didn't see as much kneeling. You saw some right. kneeling because they don't have any black guys. So ba the, uh, Major League Baseball was once, in many ways, the sport is incredibly important in the civil rights movement in America. Jackie Robinson, when he broke the color line in Major League Baseball, accomplished something 
that a lot of people thought would never happen. Mm -hmm. He didn't just, it, it wasn't a political assimilation. It wasn't a, even a social one. It was a cultural one. It was somebody coming onto a field and into some into people's homes and into their ears when they listen to the games on the radio. You know what I mean? So it was a it was a real watershed moment in the integration of America. After that, you saw a boon of amazing black talent come through Major League Baseball. The names are too plentiful for me to mention, right? From Willie Mays, right? You, you know what I mean? Bob Gibson, whoever you want to throw, whoever you want, whoever you want to throw out there, you know, Frank Robinson. All amazing baseball plays, Reggie Jackson, all the way up. And then it stopped. And Major League Baseball has not really found a way to make inroads with the black community or with the younger people since then. We've seen an influx of players from overseas. And we've also seen the game move away from some of the places to where young black boys play it, right? Yeah. So my thing is, when I looked at this, I thought it was a very savvy move on their part. Now, if people believe that Major League Baseball is on their side, maybe, at least in the playoffs, they might give the game an extra couple of looks. Remember, after what happened with NASCAR, what did you see? You saw rappers going to NASCAR events. You saw, I, I can tell you right now, you're looking at the Major League Baseball, man. Shit, Future might perform at the All-Star game now. It might be Future, fucking Roddy Rich. Oh, like they, they, might, they might really lean into this. I, I I think that it was a win win for them. I mean, they're gonna get some. I, I don't. I, they're gonna get some grief on the right, but very few of the people, very few of the people that were into the Braves and into the Cardinals and into the Mets and into the Yankees and into Tampa Bay and into into all of those teams, are not going to watch baseball because they did this. See, I actually think it's not a win win. I think it's a risk because their audience is mainly white and conservative. And the move that you made is neither one of those. And so I think that you're alienating yourself and you're latching yourself on to now your name is being affiliated with cancel culture, which is never a good thing because now, because people politicize that. So it's like, you have to, you have to choose, are you this or are you this? And I think by them taking the stance, they put themselves in the realms of the NFL and the NBA. That was heavily criticized. People said that they didn't, they just wanted to watch sports. They didn't want to see their league affiliated with those things. And so that were controver considered controversial. So I don't think that it doesn't necessarily guarantees. I didn't, I didn't sit, look at it and say, I'm watching baseball after I, this. I'm not saying that it guarantees it, but it does paint the sport in a different light. The, 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 does. the, the NFL did take a momentary bump. Um, after Colin Kaepernick. But I think that was a twofold. I think that was both people who weren't watching because Colin Kaepernick wasn't play playing. Mm -hmm. And then there was also people who weren't watching because other players were kneeling. So that was kind of like a perfect storm. In this situation right here, I really don't think that people will now look at Major League Baseball, that they will look at Major League Baseball and not want to watch it because they moved their all-star game. Number one, this, this issue is at least overtly less tinged with race than some of these other things that we're talking about. It depends how they how they roll out the All-Star game, right? Will there will, will there be conversations about Black Lives Matter, about what's happening in Georgia, what's happening in Texas, you know, Florida's gearing up their own bills to start doing other thing. Other other Republican states are going to be doing the same thing. It just depends. Will it just be a move or will it be a bigger statement? I don't yeah, know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I thought it was savvy though. Okay. <laughs> a lot of sports related topics here. Right? Um, right? a lot of sports related topics here. Uh but this one is a little bit different. Okay. Um Charles Barkley has some thoughts on the state of race relations in America while he was calling a final four game on Saturday. I'm going to now play what Charles Barkley had to say. It's about a minute long, maybe a little longer. Jackson, you want to cue that up and let the people ride with that? Listen to what Charles Barkley had to say. He ended up going viral and was trending on Twitter because of this. Check this out. Man, I think most white people and black people are great people. I really believe that in my heart. But I think our system is set up where our politicians, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, are designed to make us not like each other so they can keep their grasp of money and power. Rachel? 
That's Paul P- that Paul Pierce. That's uh, <laughs> Paul Pierce would have been a lot more fun. That's Charles Barkley on the stage. At least if it was Paul Pierce, he would have been d- drunk, whatever. We could have yeah, excused. But this was somebody who was so really uh, thinking he was saying something. So Charles Barkley put that out there, and it was lauded by everyone. Of course, all the usual suspects, Megyn Kelly, um, a lot of people, but a lot of people everywhere, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't want to minimize it and say that it was just uh, people on the right, which, by the way, we bang on people on the right a lot. There's nothing wrong with being a conservative. I enjoy conservative thought. I enjoy sparring with conservatives. Uh, but a take like that, sort of a milquetoast taste, take is kind of the thing that's right up their alley. Uh, he was everywhere for this. What do you think? I think at first glance or at first listening to it, people thought that Charles said something that was really profound. But if you really listen to what he said, it, I feel like it was simple. And it was a whole lot of nothing. And if anything, it was problematic more than it was helpful. Talking about black or white people being great was completely irrelevant to what he was saying. It was completely immaterial. I mean, he shifts the blame for holding people accountable for their behaviors rather than taking responsibility for their own explicit or implicit racism. I, I, it's That take doesn't acknowledge the history perceived of, of, of blacks in this country, perceived bias, stereotypes, uh, systemic racism. You can't just blame all the issues that black people have in this country on politicians. And I feel like it gives it, it gives them an out, like I said, for not holding people responsible for those actions. And I think I I did not see everybody praising Charles Barkley about this. It did seem to come more from the conservative viewpoint. Yeah. And I think the reason it did is because that's what they want to hear. They want to blame it on something else rather than people taking responsibility for the reason that we have racism, well, the reason we're at odds in this country. It's not a political thing. So basically you're saying, so if we, if the politicians stop doing that, then we're automatically going to be this better society. That's not the case. That's not going to happen. All of this isn't going to end if politicians just stop doing what they're doing. Maybe there's, maybe politicians contribute to it. Sure. But to blame what the divide is, the, 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 the the divide between black and white in this country is just on politicians is so problematic. I, I, but I, I also laughed when I heard it too, because it's like Charles Barkley has proven time and time again, he is not the voice to listen to when it comes to talk about issues of race. He's always blaming everybody, but white people. I'm not saying you just have to blame white people. I'm just saying it's always black people need to do better. Black people need to do this. Like four years ago, he made some very problematic comments, almost as if, well, you know, black people would have better education if they, I I, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh He talked about black people being educated. He talked about economic gain. He blamed it on us. We're the reason that we don't have these things as if black people are just inherently lazy or he talks about, he blames it on black on black crime. Charles Barkley is extremely problematic and he does more harm for our community Uh. with his takes than he does for good. And to me, this was just another one of those takes that was extremely problematic. I couldn't believe so many people couldn't see the issue with this. Uh, So what year did slaves first arrive here in America? 1619. Right. 1619. Some people say some people say it was long before. 1619, um, as early as the 1500s. Okay, so in 16, let's say that it's 1619, though. Let's let the historians do their historical shit, and me and you will agree on 1619. What didn't didn't exist in 1619? The government. American government. America. So there was no America in 1619. Right. Didn't exist. So here's the thing. Racism in America is older than America. So... Mm. The two political parties that Charles Barkley says are single-handedly responsible for shaping, forming, and exacerbating American racism didn't even exist when American racism was birthed. Okay, so even on that up and down A plus B equals C logic, they can't be all responsible for it because it predated them. Okay, Mm -hmm. It predated the system of government we have. It predated the parties by... A long time, the parties as we know them now, and it and it, well, it 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 predated the parties period by years. It predated the parties that we know as we know them by now by hundreds of years, right? So, it's a very surface level, fuzzy, uh, and palatable sentiment 
that, hey, it's not you. It's not your neighbor. It's guys who are nefarious and want money and power that are making you guys uh, hate each other, putting you at cross purposes. Now, I'm not saying that that's not true. Okay? I'm saying that it's, it's weak. So anybody who understands politics knows that as we are currently constituted, as we are, politicians lean into identity politics in order to gain power, to keep power, to do all sure. of those things. Both sides do that. Both sides lean into identity to make people uh, have enemies and to make people have allies. That's the truth. That's not why American racism exists, though. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. The reason why American racism exists is because there was an intentional effort to slaughter millions of Native Americans, to uh, slaughter and degradate and enslave hundreds of millions of, of African Americans, and to marginalize and oppress anybody in the country that wasn't a straight white male. Okay? And that system came from a system of unchecked capitalism and morphed into a way to, ma to maintain the caste system that that slavery then invented. Mm -hmm. And that stuff, is, that stuff was done on purpose, and the slavery was done on purpose. I said this before. Right. The only way that American racism will be reconciled is to have a full-throated and vigorous effort to go into the systems that have been created by those systems and reform them. When I say reform them, I mean take some of them and demolish them and reform them. Now, I'm not talking about reform. I mean demolish and then reform, right? right? Build new ones. And we're not going to be able to do that if we're distracted by the low vibration, surface level, boogeyman complex that Charles Barkley seems to have. Mm -hmm. I don't think he meant any harm by saying what he said. It's just simply a very weak way to look at the situation that we're in. Politicians in America, politicians in America, right? Politics in America. Two guys arguing, right? They didn't kill George Floyd. Correct. They didn't kill. They didn't. They didn't kill George Floyd. They didn't. Like they didn't. Like all of these things that we're seeing, th those things. Uh, uh, they didn't. They didn't do that. Not the guys themselves. The system did it. Mm -hmm. So, what I would say to Charles Barkley is, I would say, if you're telling me that the guys in charge are not doing enough to dismantle the system of American racism and oppression that's already existed, I'm with you. Yes. If you're telling me, though, that it is because of them that this system exists, you are simply historically wrong. And everybody in America, everybody, everyone, all the people in power in America, in order to get to the next part of this, are going to have to be able to look in the mirror and acknowledge their part in racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, and all of those things. Correct. Which is why I I know you said that you feel like Charles wasn't trying to, was, was that what you said? Wasn't trying to be harmful in what he said? Uh, he's wrong. He thinks he's right. <sighs> I think, I think he knows exactly what he's doing. I think he constantly says things that please a certain group and put another group down. The very group that looks just like him. I have a, I, mm. I, I really believe he knows exactly what he's doing. When you make comments Black people and white people are great people. You're giving you're giving people who are racist a cop out to not own up to their behavior. You're giving them an excuse. Well, well what I'm saying is that is actually, I mean, of course that's true. Right. Of course, there, of course there are people on each side of this that are being weaponized and demonized by forces above them. Of course that's true, but it just doesn't begin. It's like the, it's like, it's like, right. it's like, it's like eating a chocolate chip. It's like eating a chocolate chip and saying that you ate the whole cookie. 
Like you, like you, you know what I mean? And so it's like you, you, it just, it doesn't even matter. Like it's not a thing. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It's I like, just feel like he knows what he's doing when he says that. Like he's, he's purposeful in his comments. I don't think like he really thought he was saying something and it always seems to be detrimental to the black community. Every time he opens his mouth to speak on race, it does us, I don't. I was very disappointed by his comments. I mean, not surprised, not surprised, but it was just like, here we go again. Like, stop giving him a platform to talk about race. I wouldn't say that I was disappointed. I was like, huh, well, there's, you know. It's like, um, I, I was like, I, 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 I was, wouldn't say that I was disappointed. I, I mean, number one, I can't be disappointed. Like, being disappointed in Charles Barkley for saying something like that is like being disappointed. You know what I mean? Disappointed like, that, that Ernie turned up and asked him that question. Like, stop giving him a platform to be Ernie the on that speaker. Er, er, Ernie on that same shit, though. But, well, whatever. I just don't give, don't give Charles, well, he didn't say it. He directed the question to Charles. I'm not saying right. that he's not on that. It's just like, stop giving him the opportunity to have a discussion or to lead a discussion when it comes to these type of things. Right. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Look, you guys, a lot of heavy lifting goes into to dealing with these things. It's not easy. It's hard. It's difficult. It takes a lot of self-reflection and it's going to take a lot of heavy lifting. It's going to take a lot of people. It's going to be hands across America. It's going to take everybody being involved. It's going to take some people being more empowered and it's going to take some people being more accountable. Okay? If you want to, if you right. want to blame, if you want to blame all your problems on Washington, you can blame all your problems on Washington, but what those problems created Washington. So what do you do now? Anyway, uh, hey, d- d- come on on the podcast, Chuck. I'd love to talk to you about it. Love to love talk to, to ha- you. Love to have him on. Love to talk to you about it. Love to talk to you about it, Chuck. This is a big deal for the podcast. I gotta say, it's it's a big deal. I'll, I'll tell you why. We have like comedy royalty in the house. Yep, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's true. <laughs> Like when you're, if you're on SNL, you are comedy royalty. No, <laughs> but let me introduce her. We have Ego Wodum okay. on the on the on the on the podcast today. SNL cast member, give it up for her right there. <laughs> Thank uh, you, comedy royalty. So 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 you Thank you you don't believe that you're comedy royalty? No. Well, okay. Well, no. Because okay. <laughs> I there, I have so many comedians that I look up to, and I look at them as like comedy royalty, and they probably look at me as like baby baby comedy like, <laughs> or maybe right. like or like like elementary I don't know but I, anyway <laughs> I'm great you know what let me stop thank Go ahead, you take I it. receive yes, it take <laughs> the yeah. compliment I receive a whole it group of people yeah. looking up towards you yes thank you thank you so much Rachel you you know what I received the compliment and thank you for it. Um, I, and I received that that praise. Yes, yes. So comedy royalty. Oh my gosh! I just noticed my cup. Do you see that? <sighs> it's our wow. pleasure. To, I did <laughs> not do that on purpose. Ego. I swear, Rachel. I gotta be honest with you. The, the cup, we'll Rachel. Rachel we'll is uh, she's drinking Please out of a cup do. that says it's a pleasure to serve ego. Rachel, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> That's corny that you did that because you knew I she was swear. coming on. That's corny. I, I, Wait, I, Rachel, did I you do it on not, purpose? No, she did do I, it on purpose. No, I did. I'm not that. I'm not that corny nor that go. smart. You I know, did not do it comments. on purpose. I, I've been we're doing this podcast. We haven't. We, we ain't seen no other cups with, <laughs> with people's uh, names human on characteristics on it and names and stuff like that. I'm gonna send you personality one. disorder. Please do. I actually do kind of love that mug. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. And I get tagged in a lot of like. Ego is the enemy stuff on Twitter, and, 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 and I respect it. And I'm like, okay, guys, we know that joke, but I have not seen it's a pleasure to serve ego. <laughs> I love that. I so, love that. Thank okay. you, girl. Let's start there. Um, you Do people mispronounce your name a lot? Yes, Van. So when you just did that intro, you're like, we've got comedy royalty here. We've got comedy royalty. I was like, he's about to say... He, well, I didn't know what you were about to say. I always just brace myself because I feel like anything could come out of people's mouths at any time. Despite the fact I am on a show that says my name every single week, uh, you know, a lot of TV shows, the credits are rolling. You have to read it. You have to you have to interpret things the way you might. But my they say my name every week and still some people will be, people mispronounce my name all kinds of ways. Still. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Van did it right. Is what Van you're did it right. No, Van did it right. And I was like, okay, so you you held it down. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yes. Because I was, yeah, I was helping them out. That's what we were arguing over before okay, we got you, on. Just, you, to, just to let you, you in a little okay. family business. Okay, thank you for letting me know. You handle, leave it to Rachel, leave it to the black woman to save us and, and make us all look good. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. I have been. I feel like, you know, Nigerian people will be like, she she lets people say her name wrong. But so <laughs> my name, here's the thing. My name with a Nigerian accent would sound like Ego Mwodim. I don't expect a person who is born in America to be able to say that. So the way they would is Ego Wodim. <laughs> mm. uh, now, even my friends from home in Baltimore, they, they don't say, a, like, that's not, they don't pronounce the A. They don't even pronounce the letter A that way. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so they would, they say my name, they call me Ego because Ego would never come out. They couldn't do that. <laughs> that that's not, they wouldn't that speak Baltimore like that. Baltimore accent. Yes, that. they wouldn't ever. Yeah, they wouldn't say that. So I'm like, yeah, as long as we're not calling me Ego or Ago and, and things of that nature, we're, sh- I'm like, cool, cool. Ago is delicious. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> Let go my I'll go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. So I appreciate it. I'm glad you got it right. I really appreciate it. It sets a good tone. Cause when I get on things and people don't say my name right, I'm like, well now what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> if you exactly. don't even know my it's name. You don't, you don't even yep. know my name. What the hell? Um, mm-hmm. so appreciate that, guys. Yeah. All right. So uh, I my my I guess my my first question is SNL. What the hell is that like? <laughs> I thought you might ask, no, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. Um, a comedy program, which, by the way, I do feel I often want to remind people. I, I feel like sometimes when I see comments about the show, I'm like, y'all remember it's a comedy show, right? It's not <laughs> It's not a weekly talk show where we, we, in earnest, talk about the week's happenings. It is, what it's like working there is um, exhausting and challenging Mm, very, very fun. It's fun too. It's it's a lot of fun um, if you make it so. Um, but it is exhausting. Fiz- like we we stay up crazy hours. We work crazy hours. Um, I describe it as like being in residency for comedy. And because my family wanted me to be a doctor, which is the immigrant story. But um, I say some to help them conceptualize it. I'm like it is like being in residency for comedy. So the hours are crazy. We don't sleep too much. It's intense. Um, but yeah, that's in short. But if you want to know, like, real tea, you got to get specific and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and ask me specifics. <laughs> Rachel? Listen, you, well, I'm now I'm trying to think of a specific thing. Let me come back to you on that okay. with the tea. Okay. But you did okay. mention that you were pre-med. Or, yes, yes. Yeah, I think you said pre-med before. Then you mm-hmm. moved to comedy. How did that transition happen? Is comedy something you always knew you wanted to do? And how did your parents take it? Okay, so <laughs> I am first generation Nigerian American, born in Baltimore. Um, my mom, born in Nigeria, same as my dad, was raised by my mom. Um, it, it's it feels like par for the course that your family, as an especially a Nigerian American, I could say, expects you to be a doctor. They're like that is stable income. It is a respectable career. So. I remember being young and being like, I'm going to be a doctor because that's just all I knew. Like it, that, that is achieving adult success is like, I'm going to be a doctor. But around, I was a ballerina for 10 years from like seven to 17. And I loved performing so much. I always wanted to skip all the training that happened so that I could perform, but you could only skip so much and still be eligible to perform. So I did the training. I did it all, but I really loved the performances. And around like 12, like somewhere between 12, I had to be like 12, 11 or 12. I was like, I want to be an actor. So big fan of the Disney Channel. And at that time, it cost extra to have the Disney Channel. So I would watch Disney at, at yeah. friends' houses because we wasn't paying extra at my house. Right. We, we had basic cable. Yeah, remember yeah. when Disney was extra? It's a special package. Um, that's, how, exactly. that's, that's how they segregate Disney. That that's is. How they, that's how they keep us <laughs> off the Mickey Mouse Club. That's what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Well, no, yeah. no, no, I'm, no, I'm, on some, I'm on some real shit right now. It was yeah. a separate package. And my mama would be like, I ain't got no money for Mickey Mouse. Right. You, uh, right. <laughs> was, was, and that's, how they, that's why they could get away with all white boys singing Jodeci and the one black guy was singing background. 
I, I when I watched that I watched video, it. I was just watch. I was just watching. I've seen that video too many times, and I feel like I was just watching it like three weeks ago. And I was like, Me too, "What girl. is?" I was like, "This is why is this? Was it going viral again last week?" But I, I was like, "This is wrong. This is really, really wrong." <laughs> cry, cry for you, y'all don't know nothing about Joe to see. Yeah, and the young black man is back there singing background on a joke. That is that is messed up. <laughs> I, I feel like someone has to do like a documentary about Mickey Mouse Club because I feel like That's that a would really be really great idea. You yeah, want to produce it with me? <laughs> yeah, produce it. Really we could, but, but here's the thing, though: we're not going to do that because okay. we. I mean, the reality is that. We're not going to stop them checks from them mouse people from coming our way. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, the Mouseketeers. You might, you might, might want to be in the MCU one day. And they're going to be like, ah, oh, no, we're gonna, she did that documentary. Gonna, <laughs> you know what? We were going to cast you as Storm. <laughs> but remember that fucking documentary that you did? Ah, get out of here. Uh, okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. We're not going to do it. Rachel, we'll have to shove our idea. Let's shove our idea. Let's, until I'm, I'm beyond the age that Disney would include me in a movie, and then we could do the documentary. Um, so my family, I've only ever known, like, be a doctor. Um, I decided I want to be an actor when I was, like, 11 or 12, watching TV and being like, I want to do that. But um, I didn't know how to get involved in that said thing. And so... I uh, I basically was like, I have to get to Los Angeles where the acting happens. I was like, that's where it happens. Mm. And so I made it a point to be able to get into college in L.A. Um, that was like my whole my whole goal. And so I, I remember that year, like I was always very good in school, but I was always like very, also very OK with like getting a B because I'm like, this doesn't really matter. And so when I decided I needed to have like a bulletproof application to get into USC, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get straight A's this this quarter, and I Interesting. did. Interesting. What are you a Bruin? Is this is this Interest, isn't? Wait, why are you looking like that? Wait, you just, what is? You decided that you needed to get into USC as opposed and, to. And no, I'm just saying. <laughs> who did you call to make to, to help make this happen? Oh, you know should, what? No, should my we mom alert, did not Should pay. we alert the FBI oh, oh. Operation Varsity <laughs> Blues over here? I did not get who did no, you, I was, oh, I, I'm so... You see what she just said? She was just like, I was, just, I was, I was, I was dealing with that. even... That all my of a sudden, guy. all of a sudden, I decided I wanted to get in the SC and boom, I was in the SC. Mind you, this is the same girl who told you we couldn't afford Disney Channel. <laughs> we, <laughs> definitely <weren't, laughs> we definitely weren't paying anybody to get me into USC. I was like, you got to get straight A's this quarter. Mm. So I got straight A's and I took the SATs and those were cool. And so I, <laughs> I was like, I got into USC and I, my deal with my family was basically like, let me go to college across the country. So I was born and raised in Baltimore. And I was like, let me go to college across the country where we know no one because you know I want to act. I want to do this thing. I will major in biology and be pre-med because pre-med's not a major, whatever. So you have to pick a thing. So right. I was like, I will major in biology. I'll be on the pre-med track, but you have to let me go across the country, take out these student loans and pursue this thing. And so they did. As, that was like the one, because we didn't know anybody. Um, we didn't, I mean, it was, my whole family lived in Maryland, New Jersey, Nigeria, and England. That's where all my family is. So like, there's no one West, even remotely West. So that was scary for my single mom. So I was like, I'll major in this thing. You know, I'm on the straight and narrow as you would have it. And uh, I got out to LA like I planned. But then being a biology major, I was all... There is no free time. There was no free time. I had no free time to do anything else but be a biology major. Um, and then so my senior year of college, I was finished on my bio requirements. And then I interned at a talent agency. I went and like looked up an internship, um, applied for that. And then I took on two... <laughs> took on two minors in college because I thought college had to be four years, which mm -hmm. we need to tell people. I did not need to pay for that extra year of school. Like, <laughs> I'm still kind of mad about it. Like, college doesn't have to be four years. If you finish the thing, you could go. But um, I then basically started taking acting classes. And those classes were drama. And then one day, I had, like, agents and managers being like, you need to get improv on because improv was very hot around 2000. 2010, 2011, it was, it was a huge deal. It was like, you got to have improv on your resume. You got to have improv. And I didn't want to do it because I felt like it was another thing. Agents and managers who can't help you were telling young talent to do just to keep you busy and make you feel like you were doing something. And I'm a little bit of a rebellious soul. So I was like, I'm not doing that. You have everything you need. 
I'm in class. I'm not doing this extra thing. Enough people told me that I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this fucking improv class. Am I allowed to cuss? I'm going to take this improv. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this fucking improv class and everyone can get off my back. But then I took the improv class and my ass fell in love. Like immediately was like, I'm home. This is it. UCB. 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 Oh, so the, the, the Crips. The Crips. So the, 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 the UCB. No, I think Hold y'all are the Bloods. If, I think wait, y'all are no, the Bloods. Wait, no, let me just. I, I gotta think the decide. Groundlings <laughs> are the Crips. Wait, I need to. De- I want. Let me decide because this is the first time it's been posed to me like this. And uh, as a person who's passionate about hip hop, I want to figure out. Like, I think. What. I think we're the Bloods. Okay, yeah, we're the Bloods. You probably the Bloods. <laughs> we're the Bloods. We are the Bloods. We're the Bloods. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. You see me. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of my friends had gone to that. Uh, like, yeah, you were right. Impro- every, improv was all the rage around that time, and then it was also a thing to where, Rich, you you weren't out here, but like around that time, there was some there was some talk that they were getting ready to bring in Living Color back, and so I, like I had heard that. Yeah. Yeah. The whole town. Was trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to get their reel together. Everybody wanted to be a part of that. Um, mm-hmm. I want to ask you about a sketch that came out on the show yesterday that some okay. people were talking about. Did you, the, you know, the oh, it came out on Saturday. The vaccination yeah. sketch. Mm-hmm. Rachel, did you see the? Did you see <laughs> the vaccine? Did you see I the vaccination it. sketch? What's your, what's your question, Van? <laughs> my, so my question, question is, is my question is this. So I watched the vaccination sketch. It was funny. Okay. It was funny. But I did feel a little weird about it. <laughs> like okay. It, it, just, okay. It, just, it, it felt like a, a inside conversation that we was having with everybody. Have you heard okay. anything about people's reactions to the sketch? Yes. <laughs> 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 and what do you think? Well, so you anyway, just so, people know, just so people know, there was a game show sketch where <laughs> it was uh, Daniel Kaluuya, who had, who's been on higher, who's been on higher learning, Daniel Kaluuya. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was, it was, uh, it was funny. So, was this was, funny. so the sketch was, will you take the vaccine? That was like the name of the game show. And that was mm-hmm. the only question that he asked all this panel of all black people. And he kept giving the money and saying all this stuff like that. And the question is, will you take it? And then every time they would say no. Right. And it's, mm-hmm. it's kind, of, kind of lampooning vaccine hesitancy mm-hmm. in the black community. Uh, mm-hmm. Some people didn't like the sketch. Some people thought it was fucked up. What do you some think? people, some people, some people. So yeah. one one thing I'll say is, uh, I understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand how that can be. So I feel like for every sketch we write, there are people who are upset. I have sure. we have had, and that and I and I don't say that in any political. I mean, truly, somebody's going to be mad about every sketch, and you could think it's the most you know benign yeah, thing. And same, it's on, on that same show, Lil Nas X gave a lap dance to Jesus. I think. Uh huh. And as so, a yeah. Christian woman, I was mad. I mean, but I, I'm a Christian. I was like, glad they don't have me in that. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad I'm not in that one. They didn't ask me to be in that one. But I do feel like um, I understand that frustration. Uh, at the same time, um, it's a comedy show. So you said it was funny, to which I go, okay, so then the comedy program did the comedy. I don't know. I go, the comedy program did the comedy. My, I, I think sometimes un, this is not uh, in response to that particular sketch. It's something I've been thinking about lately. I had this conversation with my sister yesterday. Um, it wasn't even necessarily about that sketch. But I was, uh, I was saying that we want representation in these white spaces, right? And so we, we, we ask for that and we deserve that. Um, and part of that, come part of that, I think there's a transition period where I think people still think of this as like a white show or that the audience is, sure. is, is yes. white, right? Mm-hmm. But we are tr- the show itself is trying to evolve and the show itself is trying to be more representative. And that means hiring uh, writers who are not straight white men and hiring cast members who are not straight white men, right? And so there's this period I, fu- I think we are in where people still see it as like this... Uh, show that is largely v- viewed by white people, but you bring in these people of color or um, LGBTQIA people, and they are they are honoring their own comedic voices. So when I do, so, I, I'm a black woman who is proud to be black. I am, a, and I'm a Nigerian woman who is proud to be Nigerian. And I'm going to bring my, my comedic voice is solely based on my experience. I have no shade. I, I'm not, I'm not here to throw my people under a bus, but my comedic voice is is based on my perspective and my experience in this world. And so that's what you have. You see that on the show. 
that we all know some we all know someone who doesn't want to take the vaccine for valid reasons, right? And so we found the humor in that. I feel we, you said it was funny, and I go okay. So we found the humor in this reality. Funny. Yeah, yeah it's definitely that's funny. The, I, so I understand people being offended by it, but I go this is people writing from their own perspective, and it, it was written by black people, <laughs> um, and so. I get that it maybe you want it to be an inside conversation, but then even being in a, a largely white space as a comedian, um, even doing improv, when I was doing improv and it's the motto at UCB is don't think. Um, I would try to explain to people, I was on my first main stage team at the show and it was, there's eight people on an improv, on a house improv team. And I was the only person of color, uh, period, like, Se- uh, seven straight white people and myself. Um, and and that was incredibly challenging. And I'm a person who's incredibly confident and secure in myself and insecure in my talent. And that was really challenging because the motto is don't think, which sounds really fun. And that is the way some of the best comedy is produced in improv. But as a black person, I have to go, I do have to think, because I have to think, will this white audience get this? Will my white uh, teammates up here be able to support me in whatever move I make, whatever I make the next line, will they understand this reference I make? And that's simply something they don't have to they don't think have about. They have to deal with, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we you, we are brought into these spaces that, yeah, maybe ha- are historically predominantly white, um, I feel we should be allowed, I do feel we should be allowed the, the freedom to uh, make comedy from our perspective, just the way white people are able to make comedy based on their own experience and perspective. Mm. Um, yeah. Fair so, enough. I, think, I I mean, that's so well said. I think maybe people had an issue because it had to deal with COVID. Sure. And then because the four people represented were each representing a different stereotype. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, doctors were like, oh, it's inaccurately portraying the vaccine hesitancy in the black community. Um, and I think for me, when I watch it, look at it on Twitter and I looked at the comments, it was white people saying, "Ooh, that's true. And I was mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, what you talking about? That's mm-hmm. the, what, what are you laughing at? That's not mm-hmm, funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and and you said and you made a, a a point that it's fun. It's funny though, right? Like mm-hmm. we laughed. Like we did mm-hmm. think it was funny. Does, has there ever been an op, uh, a moment where you were like, it's funny, but that takes it too far? Do you ever come across I, that in your work with SNL? I I try. I I have not thought that particularly, but that's not to say that hasn't happened. If I'm if I'm being honest, because I also have sort of a bit of tunnel vision as, as far the way I like even approach my own work. Cause there's so much to be juggling there. I can tell you in my personal life. Um, just recently, my friend was telling me a story that is a reality that could happen. So my, my friend's telling me a story about some dude and he had his ex-girlfriend's name saved in his phone as something not, it's like not nice. It's not even, it's not controversial, but I don't want to say because then he'll know it's him anyway, but like (laughs) something not nice, right? It's it's nothing like hateful, but it's like, well, that's not nice if you dated this person and we laughed at it. And then I called her like two days later and I was like, great, but you need to run from this nigga because, am I allowed to say nigga? Anyway, you need to run from this nigga because uh, I was like, that's funny, but that's like, when you really think about it as a partner, abusive. So like we did laugh at it, but then that's abusive. So I don't, we live in a world where that, those two things can, can be true. Not, not everything that's funny is right. Um, and, uh, but, but I feel, I feel as a person who's in the creative position and in that space and, and has been largely, even the way I've come up, it has been in predominantly white spaces and trying to do the thing that they all get to do with such freedom um, and acceptance. I, I do wish uh, we would um, allow ourselves grace. some more of that grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. I want to. So I'm. A, I'm going to ask. Can I ask a Nigerian question? Yes. Okay. What's a Nigerian question? <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. I'll tell you what it is. Tell, okay, I'll tell you okay. what it is. Okay, okay. I started a debate. I have a lot of Nigerian friends. Um, okay. Uh, shout out to Kaz, John, Jim, all of my homies. Uh, I have a lot of Nigerian friends, and I and I dated a Nigerian girl back in the day. Okay, and I started a real debate okay. on Twitter about what I'm about to ask. Okay, so I dated her; it was great. And okay. this was I was a, like a lot younger, and her mm-hmm. brother referred to me as a name. 
Oh, uh -oh. we talked about uh -oh. this. We talked about this. <laughs> we talked about so he, this. Yeah. So y'all brought me on to talk about it again. Okay, what is what is no, she no, said? No, 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 no. The, the okay. brother said that I was a kata. Okay. Right. And okay. So I asked on, and so some of my homies said that's not an insult. That's just a name for Black Americans. Uh -huh. And then some of my other some of my other homies was like, that's definitely an insult. Like, that's 100% an insult. Mm -hmm. uh, which is it? I, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is really funny. No, no, this is, this is funny because I feel, too, as a person, I had always known it as just a name for Black Americans. That's mm. what, genuinely, that's what I had always known it as. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, as I, I got older, I, pro I feel like my brother was in college, so I must have been early college, late high school. It was like, oh, this is an insulting thing. And I have a feeling, I don't know what the origins of it are, mm -hmm. uh, what the origins of it is, but I will say that I have a feeling that many Nigerians do mean it just simply in the, this is what we call Black Americans. Because even in the village my mom is from, they call white people um, ndebeke. And I asked her what that meant. And Beke is the like first white man that came to their village. Mm -hmm. And but like I I didn't know that for so long. It took me asking, like, do you know this? And then right. sometimes you'll ask a Nigerian and be like, they'll be like, I don't know. We just say it because it's not an actual part of our language. It's not like gonna be in the dictionary necessarily. Mm -hmm. It's like this slang term that's gotten passed around. And I do think when you have something like that, it can get bastardized. So I what I'll say to that is that. I know it to just mean a black American, but then I learned that maybe Settle. it means something. If, yeah, but that's what that's that's what in college go, it was negative. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But no, the et, but but like the etymology of it, I'm like I don't know the history of it. Like mm -hmm. I can tell you what Ndebeke means and where it came from and what it means, but because I've asked my mom and she happens to know, but I don't know what the origin of uh, Akata is. But I know it to be black American. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Before we let you go, I want to know who your favorite, um, uh, your favorite impersonation to do, and the favorite guest that you've worked with on the show. Fantastic. Okay, okay. So favorite impersonation, impression I do, I would say is Dion Warwick, she, Miss Dion, <laughs> the Queen. <laughs> Y'all knew I was gonna say that, but for real, like she is just an absolute. I just love her. Ooh, she is I amazing. love her spirit. I, I'm I'm waiting for the day COVID is over. We can meet because I, I I'm fascinated by her. She has such a remarkable career, and she's so fun. She is so funny. Yeah. So when you have a funny person and you get to do an impression of a person who is inherently funny, and you're not trying to make some sort of like square funny, uh -huh. it, it's it, it's it's that much more rewarding and exciting and enjoyable to do. So she's my favorite hands down. And the way she's been receptive of my impression and knows it comes from a place of love just endears me to her even more and more. <laughs> she's Dion Warwick hands down. Um, uh, and your second question, if you asked me something else. You asked favorite me something. Guess favorite guess. Favorite guest. Favorite guest. Favorite guest that I work with. Um, I have to say, this is also from this most recent episode, Daniel Kaluuya's got to be up there. I was yeah. like, that was Y'all were really, great together. He thank was dope. you so much. That like, was dope. Thank you so much, Rachel. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Van. He was, he was fantastic, and I felt so tapped in, um, really a clear communicator, and really gave everything his all throughout the week and really cared about this, was excited to be there. Um, and then to get to do that proud parent sketch with him, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's, it, it's never felt like we had the right person there to do it with. Um, and so that's not necessarily fair to say, but anyway, timing also worked <laughs> out. I'm more senior now than I was in the first two years. All, all these things worked out to make it, make it, Perfect. make it just right. So yeah. Um, Daniel, I, which is brand new, but yeah, Daniel, he was amazing. By the so way, far. he's also the coolest talker in the world. Talks to you, yeah. like, hey, hey, Van, yeah. Let me tell you, let me tell you, Van. Hold on, bust this. I'm like, whoa. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I was just I'm trying to like mesmerized. He's like, he's like, hey, check this out. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is too, this is kind of like, this guy is amazing. Well, I was just, like, <laughs> I was just, I was saying that because the first day I met him was on Tuesday before our writing night started and I wanted to pitch him this idea. And I don't always take the opportunity to meet the host on writing night because sometimes it's not necessary. But I had heard his interview on Kimmel 
where he's talking about his mom not like Kim was like, is she is your mom excited that you won a Golden Globe? And he's like, nope, she's not pressed. She don't care. <laughs> and right. I'm like, he he gets it. He gets it. So when I got on the Zoom to meet him, just so cool. I was like, this yeah. nigga is so cool. He is cool. <laughs> he, yeah. He, he's really cool. He's really good people. Um, I just truly all love anytime I see him. He was fantastic. I'm grateful I got to work with him. Yeah. 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 Well, Ego, right. we're going to let you go. Uh, all right. I, 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 we're going to let you go. That's what my dad would be like. All right, son. <laughs> all right. We're going to let you go. I'm going to go in. Uh, all right, boy. You want to go. It's time for y'all. Y'all got somewhere to be and other oh, stuff I to have, do. I don't have no idea. <laughs> no, nothing to be. That's what, that's what we do. We chilling right now. Um, yeah, we uh, I, I, listen, I, I love the fact that you guys are doing your thing. I think the one thing that I love about SNL is when I look at my man, Chris, when I look at you, when I look at Kenny, when I look at everybody that's on there, there seems to be not just representation, but a real creative pulse there yeah. from, from all of you guys. And it, it really Thank is you. amazing to see. And everybody's so talented in completely different ways. Yeah, so it, yeah. it, it really works. And I'm, I'm very happy for you and Thanks, all your same. success and how everything's Thank working you, out Rachel. for you, man. It's just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it, guys. I'm so glad I got to come on. It's so good to we meet you. Too. In person next time, right? In person. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. We'll have to do that. Okay. Yeah. I got one okay. of these. I'm going to DM you. Please. I yes, got, please yeah, do. Yeah. Okay. My homegirl right. makes them. Van says okay. I'm always selling something. I'm not selling. Always. <laughs> QVC. QVC, right? I appreciate that. Right. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Van. I appreciate right. that. It's nice to meet you. Bye. You too. All right. We promised you guys that we would keep you updated on the Derek Chauvin trial. And we are going to do that now with Yodi Tewoldi uh, from Black News Channel and from America's Most Wanted. America's Most Wanted. She's on a lookout. Be careful. <laughs> we, just <caught laughs> a we just caught a fugitive. We just caught a fugitive couple. Good for you, girl. Insane. Mm -hmm. so, I heard, they, I heard their good. names was Tyrone <laughs> and Keisha Johnson. <laughs> on the run for bad checks from Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Don't be down playing the show now. These are serious criminals, all right? I'm sure, no, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. We're talking about America's Most Wanted. Normally, some ghastly things happen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, messing with you. But come, fill us in on, starting this week, what we need to know about proceedings uh, in the Derek Chauvin trial. Okay, so last week was really emotional because they had bystanders come in, talk about what um, they witnessed and what that day meant to them moving forward. So it was really, really emotional last week. Um, this week is going to be more technical, um, more expertise on the, on the stand. But right now, the prosecution called the chief of police, the obviously the, the person that fired Derek Chauvin literally the next day. Um, and so they're calling other officers that worked with him to testify that the use of force was just basically bleh. Like not, it was, it, it was just not appropriate. It was wrong. It was criminal. Um, and then they're going to bring on use of force experts. And then who they bring in after is questionable, but the defense is going to have their own use of force experts as well. that are going to say opposite of what the state's saying. But what's really powerful is that they're not paying these experts, so to speak, but they're paying, they're not paying colleagues of Derek Chauvin to come in and say, I've trained with this guy. I've known him for two decades. And what he did was absolutely like just not okay. So that is going to be powerful because that testimony is just going to bolster the experts that they do bring in after. Mm, we saw the chief of police testify yesterday. Yeah. It was everywhere. And what kept blasting at the bottom of the screen was that he said that Chauvin did not use reasonable force. How damaging was his testimony to the defense's case? Um, so far in the trial? I mean, this was a very likable um, witness. He spoke with compassion. He talked about policing with compassion. You believed every word that he said. He would turn his head and look at the jurors and address them personally. So that's always a good thing for, for witnesses to do. You could tell that he's been in trial and has done this a number of times. But he's just really authentic. That, to me, spoke volumes in terms of can the jury believe what he's saying? Because, again, when prosecutors bring in experts, they're being paid. Not to say that they're tailoring their testimony to whoever's paying the bill, but, I mean, that's kind of in the back of your head. This is a person that did what he did the day after George Floyd died, fired all the officers, and then there was even a letter that was um, – released with a number of officers denouncing what Derek Chauvin did. So a separation very early on. So very damaging to 
the defense, what the defense tried to come at uh, the chief with is, hey, how long has it been since you've actually been on patrol? How many people have you arrested lately? You know things have changed, right? So, of course, that's the angle they're going at. They're basically saying you're more of a, a paper pusher. You're not really out there. You don't really understand. But this is the chief of police. He's been at pretty much every single position in the department before he's even gotten to the point that he is. So I don't think that that worked, but very damaging to the defense. So there have been people out there that have been talking about what the defense's strategy in this case is, which is to prove in some way that what happened to George Floyd was the result of drugs in his system and not the force used by Derek Chauvin. Can you just explain to people, I guess for lack of a better word, how that works? What would the defense have to prove in this instance in order to have Derek Chauvin acquitted? Well, I'll say the lingo in terms of what the defense has to prove, they don't have to prove the thing, right? The burden of proof is on the the, prosecution. Okay, right. They don't have to put a shred of evidence on. But what they are going to do is they're going to have, one, the use of force experts saying, one, the use of force that was used by Derek Chauvin was reasonable. And two, they're going to have some medical experts come on and say, the reason why um, George Floyd couldn't get oxygen, couldn't breathe, is because of the fentanyl and whatever other drug he might have ingested. Now, the problem with that, and and that's a huge, huge issue with uh, uh, causation. Causation is a big thing, a big element that the prosecution has to prove. If you can't prove that what Derek Chauvin did killed George Floyd, um, and it's a substantial factor, not the only factor, a substantial one, then they're going to lose their case. So what the... um, the ER doctor that came on today said what he saw when um, George Floyd came to the hospital is that he died from asphyxiation. So a suffocation, right? Due to the knee being applied to his neck. The defense went back and said, hold on, did, were you even aware that drugs were a possibility, like even in a system? And they, he, he said, no, I didn't, I didn't have that information. So that was a win for the defense because, again, they're trying to muddy the waters for the jurors and say, listen, that still could have been a contributing factor why he couldn't get oxygen to the brain was that the drugs that he ingested has something to do with it. The only problem with that is if y'all watch the video of George Floyd in the in the convenience store, Cup Foods, he was jovial. He was, he he was in a good mood. He was yeah. talking to everybody. You never would have guessed that an hour later he would have been overdose thing, right? right? And so I think but for that knee to his neck, he would have been alive. So it's really hard to believe that someone in that sort of mood and, and exhibiting that type of behavior would have overdosed an hour later. Mm. See, it's it's interesting you say this because it really seems like it's going to come down to the experts. If causation is, is like a key element, then what we saw last week, which you already stated was very emotional. How much does that even come into play when it comes to the decision that, that the jury is going to make? Well, experts sometimes talk over people's heads. And mm-hmm. so I think I mentioned this before. Experts tend to negate each other. They, t- send, they tend to cancel each other out. So what mm-hmm. jurors are going to end up doing is going with what they see and what they hear. And what's really, like I said, an advantage for the prosecution is that not only are they bringing experts, they're also bringing on his own colleagues. They didn't have to testify. You know what I'm saying? So they're giving they're giving more of the inside um, uh, explainer, so to speak, in layman terms versus the expertise that talk about their training and, and what they've read and uh, you know articles that they've written. We're talking about officers who are in the same position as Derek Chauvin saying, that's something that's not objectively what a cop would do. And I could speak to that because I've been a cop and I am a cop. So you've got former and current officers speaking out against them. And then you'll have that strengthened by experts. So if the jury cancels out the experts, they could still listen to the cops. They could still mm-hmm. listen to the police chief. They could still listen to all of those witnesses that testified last week about what they saw and all the different angles and the real-time narration that they were giving. Um, so I think that the video at the end of the day really helps the prosecution because if the juror says, listen, I don't understand what you said, expert, and what you said, expert, on either side, I'm just going to go off of what I saw. That wasn't reasonable. He didn't give medical attention. And that's what the chief said. At the end of the day, the force should have stopped when he was handcuffed, when he was on his stomach, when he was not resisting, and especially when he was saying, I can't breathe. Mm-hmm. That is something that they should have done, called EMS. And then while they're waiting for EMS, administer some sort of medical assistance. And that's that's something that just wasn't done. And the jurors can see that. Mm-hmm. So are you not going to believe your eyes? 
Yeah, well, hopefully they will see that. Hopefully yeah. they will say that. But I know one thing, our listeners are going to be the most informed on the ins and outs of everything going on in this trial because of you, yes. Yodi. We appreciate you coming back on. You're doing, you're doing Black News Channel tonight? I'm doing black. No, I'm actually rehearsing. I'm gonna watch Mark and support him, but I'm not. I'm not going on tonight. But I am launching next week, so next Monday. Let, next Monday, you launch, and I guarantee you, by next Monday, thirty-five people gonna have been locked up <laughs> from America's most wanted. <laughs> We're setting the bar high, baby. Hey, don't, don't ignore my invite, too, to talk about the spaceships. So don't, I'm don't coming on. The, I can't wait it. to come on there and thank talk you. about spaceships. Um, all right. Thank yeah. you so much for making thank us smarter you. today on Higher Learning. We really appreciate it. Bye, guys. All right, bye. bye, -bye. Um, okay, so there's no good way to get into this. Uh, there's somebody that's hanging on by a thread for their life. Yeah. That is... This is incredibly important to hip hop in the last 25, 30 years. Hip hop period. That man is Earl Simmons. You know him better as DMX. Uh, apparently, Earl DMX uh, suffered a heart attack and a drug after a drug overdose on Saturday and is in a very bad state. Now, he is being kept alive right now by uh, you know. Artificial means, breathing tubes, all of the stuff. There's been some talk that he is currently in a vegetative state. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some speculation yesterday. I think his lawyer had said that he was off of the life support and breathing on his own. Right. I, 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 guess, that. That, I guess that turned out to like not be true. Really? I don't think he was as... I don't think he... I think that that was later like amended. They came back. Mm. It was. They... As of 9.45 this morning, he is still on life support, and there's going to be a candlelight vigil held, held uh, outside White Plains Hospital at 5 p.m. Eastern tonight. Um, here's the thing. This is what I'm going to say. Number one, I pray with every fiber in my being that DMX survives this and comes back to be some version of, of DMX that we always mm -hmm. knew. Uh, but I will tell you this. I hope that no matter what happens, people can look at him for the man that he has tried to be. Mm -hmm. Now, if you start bullet pointing things, you're going to look at DMX as maybe a flawed individual, maybe this, maybe that. There is a goodness to him and a sincerity to him. If you've ever heard him talk, that is difficult to put into words. Go mm -hmm. to, like, you go to a DMX concert and he prayed at every concert. I was at, I happened to be at one where he did mm. the prayer and he cried. There was always a man that X wanted to be. And his life was in search of that guy. I never forget. Yeah. Uh, we did a TMZ thing with him. Uh, we caught him outside of the airport. And he was eating food. And our camera guy went, oh, man, you're making me hungry. That food looks really good. And X went, oh, get it. somebody get him a fork. Like, get him a fork. Like, get him a fork. Mm -hmm. And he stands mm -hmm. and he's talking to the guy. He's like, no, nah, man, I barely, I barely touched it. I barely touched it. Like, here, here you go, man. I barely touched it. There you go. That's yours. And he's like, for real? He's like, yeah, man. That's some of the best Jamaican food in, in all of LA. That's we jamming. He's like, I tell you about all the different places I love to eat in LA. And he went up and the guy didn't want to eat. He's like, man, eat, eat. You got my permission to eat, man. I'm, and he, you know, and you get celebrities at TMZ that like would, uh, would run, would yell, would scream. And, you know, sometimes they were right. They're having mm -hmm. somebody stick a camera in their face. But this guy fed the guy. Yeah. He fed he fed the parasite. Yeah. So <laughs> the parasite. Um uh. I was just floored by this, still am floored by this. And yeah. I'm just hoping beyond hope. That's all I can yeah. say. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, you pretty much said it all. Just praying for a, a healthy and a speedy recovery. I did not know. I thought, I honestly thought as we started this podcast that he was doing better from the word from his team or attorney. Um, I hope that's right. I hope he is doing better. And um, all we can do is continue to keep him in our prayers. Yeah, very true, very true. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, damn. Why did you react like that? I don't, I get nervous for the questions. I just never know what they're going to be. I forget, and I forget that they're every Monday. You forget about Van's very serious question of the week. Yeah. Do you Sorry. not like, do you not like Van's very serious question of the week? No, Let's be they're honest. always thought provoking that we, everyone else loves them too. I just get nervous. I'm like, oh my God, what is he going to ask me? Because despite what you guys think, it's not something that we prepare for. You know, I have no idea what the what the serious question of the week is going to be. It's always a serious question. Okay. And it's always a great question. This one is not as good this week. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll do just fine. Okay, so here's the deal. You have to live hmm. five years as an animal. <laughs> You get so you're gonna live five years as an animal. Okay. 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 If you survive the five years after living as an animal, you get one hundred million dollars. You have to survive five years as an animal. Now, here's the thing about this: you're gonna have your human consciousness inside of this animal. Okay. Okay. You you're gonna be able to think like a human. Do all of this stuff as the animal. But you have to survive five years as the animal. This is in a while. Okay. 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 Which animal are you going to choose? Which animal? Okay. Well, obviously, it's got to be a survival of the fittest type situation because I got to survive out here in the wild for five years. Five years. I'm going to go with the lion. I think with the that's, lion. I'm going to go with the lion. I think it's the king of the jungle. Uh, I think I could make it because I'm going to have the strength of a lion, right? I'm going to have the mind of a human. So yeah. that means I'm going to be, it, and it's my mind, it's, I'm mm -hmm. going to be skilled. I'm going to be knowledgeable. But I'm going to have the strength of a lion. I think I could, I could go longer than five years. Right. You think you could go longer than five years? I go longer than five years. Guess what's going to happen to you? Don't tell me what's going to happen to me. I just told you what's going to happen. Well, I'm going to survive longer than five years. Is Donald Trump Jr. going to put one in your ass? So okay. Remember what happened to Cecil the Lion? But remember, well, I have the mentality of a human. I know they're out here hunting me. Easy, I know this. Easy for me. Easy answer. Or, 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 orca. I would be a killer <laughs> whale. Or, 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 okay, orca. I was going to ask you. So when you uh, said wild, orca. I was going to ask you, does that mean that I can be in the water? Well, Not that I was going to pick an orca. I just was going to ask you that question. I decided to go are you, with are you asking me, can things be wild while they're in the water? No, Is I just the immediately thought land. I land, was going to say, does you. that include water? But orca. okay, an orca. orca. All right. Apex, you know? You know what? A great white shark come try mm -hmm. to get in the orca's face. You know what an orca do? Fuck you, great white shark. Smack <laughs> the shit out of him. Orca. I could, I could survive. And plus, orcas are fucking dope, bro. Like I just want to be on land. I wouldn't want to be in the water for five years. No, I'm going to swim around. I'm going to swim around. I'm going to eat no. chum or whatever they have. You know what I mean? You're but not going to miss you, land? You're not going to miss land? I'm coming back to the land with the oh, 100 milli. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm coming back to the land. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'll tell you one what? thing. You have some problems. As the lion. No, stop telling me how I'm going to live my life as a lion. You have some <laughs> issues as the I lion. Think, I think you're low-key mad you didn't pick lion. How come nobody, how come we didn't pick a bird of some sort? I hate birds. I That's despise what I was going to say. I was going to say bald eagle. Bald hey, eagle? Did, anybody, did we ask Jackson? Bald, no. Oh, <laughs> she Spe she Speaking of him. Jackson, speaking of Jackson, it's somebody's birthday today. Oh, Y'all go show Jackson some love. Show Jackson, Happy show Jackson birthday, some Jackson. birthday love. 25. Happy birthday, Jackson. It's a big birthday. It's Thank a big you, birthday. guys. Jackson, that's it. Might be a quarter life crisis. Huh. <laughs> oh, just stirring in my soul. Hold on. Come on. Let's do it, John. John Mayer. Either way, I wonder 
sometimes. Come on, Jackson. About the outcome. Y'all never y'all don't listen to John Mayer? I love John Mayer. I don't yeah. know that song. I just want to let you sing as the best birthday present I could have gotten right there. That's why Georgia, man. Why Okay. So you know what? Nobody joins in. Y'all lame, man. Like nobody I don't know nobody it. wants to can't help you out. Can't you don't help know you out. John. You don't, you don't, I'm just having you don't, too much fun. You don't listen to John Mayer? I didn't say that. I just am not well versed in John Mayer. I don't know. What's that your song. favorite John Sorry. Mayer song? What's your favorite John Mayer uh, song? Gravity, probably. Mm. Okay. okay. You know, uh, you uh, asked. Uh, don't know. You uh, asked. Uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity's <laughs> good. Gravity's good. All right. That's enough. Um, <laughs> We're out of here. Uh, take thing caps off. Do not stop learning. Uh, lots of loose ends to button up on Thursday. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on this week. A lot of stuff in the news. Prayers to DMX. Prayers yep. to his family. Prayers to everyone. Uh, put your good energy together. Send it out to them. Uh, God can do anything. God can do anything. So I'm hoping he does this. I'm hoping God does this. Not he. I'm hoping God does this. Okay. Uh, uh, I am Van Lathan. I am Rachel Lindsay. We are out.